So hello good people of the internet, it is I, Tommy Kelly, and this is Adventures in Woo Woo. So as usual, we have a number of things going on in the show, and uh, this week we get uh, up to all sorts. We get the results of the remote viewing game that we started last week, or that we played last week, and then we do a new remote viewing game this week, which I've enlisted the help of Spud from the Comedy Cast to help us out. And he's in Poland, and he got up to something interesting last Saturday that we get to remote view. We also do some divination, and I did some uh, Ford Servants divination, which is also another app that I used that um, kind of worked, kind of didn't work. We'll see how that goes. And then we did some bibliomancy as well. And then we also have um, a kind of a cool spirit bothering uh, exercise using uh, this cool app I found. Um, it's a whole session of me trying to contact, starting off as contacting my uh, spirit guardian or my guardian spirit, but uh, it turns into general contact, which is something I probably will do more of in the future because it came out really well. It's quite creepy too. So on with the show. So, the results of the remote viewing game number one. In the other part of the show, I will be talking about the details of remote viewing game number two. But for the minute, we're going to go over what we did last week and what the feedback people got from uh, the, the first one. Now, this was the envelope, and that was the date I put it in. And uh, I will go through people's responses or ideas or uh, impressions before I uh, reveal what the actual thing was. So, Samot uh, came up with a cone and a donut with a 3D cross on the top, also a church. Spud, something carish. Don't ask me why, but that's what my first thought was. That's a bit vague, Spud. Sarara V, I see a picture of a tree, the roots going deep down. It is a flat image, more like an illustration. There is a prominence of neutral colors. The Witch of Seacliff, a magician. I saw a clown, a dove, and then the name magician came to me. I've only been successful at remote viewing when it has been with a person I'm close with. I've tried the envelope game before, but never had much success with it. I think it's definitely a real phenomena that, uh, with practice, can be honed a skill. So Crow Crow says, is it a DSL or a camera? Catherine Salyers, drawing or painting, engraving, not a photo. Well, it is a drawing, definitely a drawing, because I drew it. Uh, of a sailboat or ship with sails. The bow of the ship is facing to the right. There's something wrong or off about how the sails are drawn. They're an accurate or out of perspective, as if the artist doesn't understand how they work. The water is depicted as lots of small pointy waves. Interesting. I'll just note that. To the left behind the ship is a sea serpent or sea monster with loops of its body or tentacles coming out of the water. That's interesting, and you'll see why it's interesting. Firemead, I can't shake the feeling that ducks are involved. <laughs> Firemead, um, ducks are always kind of involved. They're always watching, they're always looking, particularly at you, be aware. Joe Sims, the great Joe Sims. I'm getting all sorts of images in my head. I started with a tree or a photo of a tree, then flipped to an x-ray or a scan. I'm usually rubbish at these games unless I don't really think about them at all. I get that, I understand that completely. So there were, um, that's all the responses I have as of the time that I've decided to open this now. And, um, oh no, I missed one. Bet Wells. With my inks, what my instincts pictured was a circle with a little bird sitting on top, kind of like a royal orb or apple with a leaf. And I'll come back to Bet in a moment. So I'm going to open this now. And, uh,. This is what I drew. So, well, on uh, Catherine Sol Soliers, I'm terrible with names, so don't please don't take offense that I pronounced yours wrong. The water's depicted as lots of small pointy waves. That's kind of interesting. And with tentacles coming out of the water. So that was kind of the closest that I could see. Still not it, obviously. It's a square with, you know, squiggly lines in it, pointy squiggly lines in it. Now, Bep Wells also points out, and she says, I don't consider the game to be remote viewing per se because you showed us the envelope. Um, I see more as ESP. And being that this is 
the, the shape that it came out with and all that. It's very, I, I totally agree with you, Beth, that it is very ESP. And that's kind of the, um, I think, the fault with this game. I've done this game a number of times in CMG back in the day. And one of the times I did the Eiffel Tower, but what it wasn't really the Eiffel Tower. It was the picture of an Eiffel Tower, of the Eiffel Tower. And someone kind of got it, but not really kind of had the, um, the triangle building type thing. Uh, but like, what are you remote viewing then? Are you remote viewing the picture or the picture on my hard drive? Um, not sure. I did print ones out before and put them on my wall, and uh, so I don't know if it did that one. So, what exactly are you remote viewing? Was you remote viewing the actual Eiffel Tower? And that's kind of the problem with all of these things. Well, no, not with all of these things with this particular game, and. They did start, the, the guys who were actually doing the remote viewing uh, did start with envelopes, but Ingo Swan, did, <laughs> when he was brought on board, said, um, I'm not doing this uh, envelope rubbish. If I want to know what's in the envelope, I will open the envelope. So he kind of poo-pooed the idea of envelopes, but I thought it was a good kind of way to start these type of games. We have a much better way of doing it this week. I think it's a much better game and... Uh, Involves involves Spud, whose uh, something carish um, resp uh, uh, impression was way off, of course. So uh, might, he might be the, the best person to be doing these remote viewing games, or maybe he would be because he was so far off. So um, that I'll talk about that in the next part of the, the section. It'll be tomorrow, so it'll be in a different place, time continuum, and we'll get that game. I think that will be more successful and probably it's less ESP and more proper remote viewing. So, um, so yeah, thanks for playing, and uh, that's uh, that's the remote viewing game number one done and dusted. So over the last while, over the last couple of weeks, I've been doing various different techniques and ideas and magic kind of things try and get in contact with a guide, my spirit guide or my spirit helper or whatever it is, name, whatever name I want to give to these things, I'm not sure. I'm um, not even sure if it actually exists, but it's just a kind of a feeling I have within with me and I thought what a good kind of series or kind of segment of the shoulder where I could try and use all the magical techniques that I've come across to get in contact with spirit guides and see if anything happens. So we've tried sigils, we've tried um, EVP, and this week what I want to try is a new app that I got and it's called Necrophonic. And it's basically used to kind of contact the dead. It's very similar to a ghost box where it uses a word banks, basically bits of sounds, bits of um, words, just different sounds to try and allow spirits to manipulate them in such a way that you get kind of um, words and sounds just coming out. And going through YouTube and stuff, some people get really good responses out of it. It's mostly used, I say, to, to contact the dead or whatever, but can also be used to, you know, contact spirits in general, which is what I'm going to try to attempt to do today. So as you can see, there's a number of different settings. And as you see, there's the DR60 sound bike, which is what I talked about last week when regard to the EVP, which is this recorder that people use that is really good for EVP for whatever kind of, either it's preamp or it's internal kind of workings are uh, very conducive to getting this type of EVP thing. So there's a kind of a setting where someone has taken or that the guy who made the app has taken the sound from that and you can add it in as a kind of a white noise background. And then there's reverb and echo. Echo I'm not so keen on, so I mightn't use it. Uh, the reverb I like, so we'll also, we'll try that. Now there's eight banks of different sounds and none, there's no full word in any of it. Uh, the guy says who created it, it's just all kind of like uh, phonics, uh, you know, a, e, a, o, o, all these type of things. So we'll try it and see what happens. If nothing else, it's a, a bit of fun. So let's, we'll hit start. And we'll put on the reverb. We'll try it with the white noise. Get it suitably creepy. And, uh, okay. <laughs> So it's going to be random kind of noises until we get to the point where we get established communication. So I'm just briefly going to uh, kind of just chill down and get into a more kind of meditative state. Right. 
So I'm trying to contact my spirit guide. Can my spirit guide use this app and the sound banks created within to contact me? Sounds like I said no. Um, but if you, if it's no, then how did you use this thing? A lot of like random stuff. None of it really making anything cohesive or coherent even. We'll try it without the white noise. That sounded cool. Just stop for a second. One of the things that people suggested is, is that it's very hard to hear when you're in the middle of the session and I the whole energy of the room has changed. By the way, I just thought I'd uh, <laughs> add that. Um, it has that kind of sense of someone standing behind me, which I got before when I did the EVP in the um, Richardstown Church. All those ages was the first time I tried to do it. But very, not so much, it's kind of dissipating now, but a very strong sense of someone standing behind me. Anyway, my point of what I was going to say is that um, when you're doing these type of EVPs or this kind of spirit box, an awful lot of it you won't realise what to say I'll tell you, you know, go through the audio later and have a real good think about it and a real listen to it and see if um, there was kind of uh, messages. So I will do that and if I do come up with hear anything I'll put it up as a kind of a subtitle on the screen. So we'll start again, we'll try it again, a bit more kind of uh, settled. We're a bit freaked by that feeling but uh, we'll continue. Is my spirit guide here? Would my spirit guide like to talk to me? I guess I'm like gone. Is there anything here who would like to talk to me? Is there a message or something I need to know? What would you like to tell me? Can you say my name? Can you say my name again? How many spirits are here talking to me? Ten? Ten? A little bit crowded. Can you tell me your name? Tom. Can you give me a full sentence? Can you use this app to manipulate the audio banks to give me a full sentence? I'll just stop it again. It's definitely creepy. Like I mean, it's it does like you can, what that whole um, paranoia. I think is when you see faces or try to see things, um, meaning and things that are random. But I think it could be just visual. I don't know if it's the word for even hearing it. But um, it definitely would get you in a kind of a state and get you, you know, properly creeped out. Particularly because it's late at night here, late-ish. It's late for me. Um, it's dark. There's no one around me. I've just got kind of got lights. It is creepy, and it's certainly um, at times I thought I could hear something, and uh, so you know even in the sense of that whole thing of like similar to like bibliomancy or 
switching the channels to get an answer to your divination your tv channels are going through to like excuse me um a radio or something like that to kind of get jumbled kind of responses or whatever i can see it being helpful in that kind of a thing but um there definitely seem to be some answers there but again at random like what there's nothing there's nothing that we, you know, it's definitely, it's not proving anything. Of course, it's very first time. Maybe these things come with practice, whatever. But we'll try again. But my, it's it's um, definitely creepy. That's that's the best I can say. But I'll try with all of the stuff. The white noise, the echo, the whole thing. Can you say my name? Is there something you would like to tell me? Tom. 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 Definitely sounded like Tom there. We just want to stop. Which is interesting. That echo is very annoying. I'll turn it off. Um, when I moved to the town, I moved it to now. My name was always Tommy. Obviously, it was Chris and Thomas, but my name was uh, Tommy. Everyone in this town just calls me Tom, and it's not something I've ever experienced before. But even down to like kids and stuff like that, and the postman originally started calling me Tom, and he only knew me by reading my name on the letters. You know, that were arriving, I would be Tommy, obviously. So it's interesting that I'm, I keep hearing Tom when I ask for my name. Again, I'm aware that that could all be in my head, and I'll know better when I listen back to it. But, uh, I, w I wouldn't be surprised if the spirits also called me Tom. So I'm going to leave off the echo because I don't like it. Can you say my name? What is your name? How could I make this communication better? Are you physically in the room with me? Is this a good way for me to contact my spirit guide? Is spirit guide the correct name? Have you a message for someone who's listening to this now? Every time I switch it off, there's kind of a weird thing, which may be part of it. So I'm just gonna do a um, final few moments. I'm going to put it again, I put it all on the white noise, the echo, the whole thing, and uh, see what happens. Um, and then when I go back, and if I see if there's something that may I may have missed or whatever. Can you tell me your name? What do I most need to know right now? Can you tell me a better way to contact you? Am I just wasting my time with this app? Okay. Can you say my name as clear as you possibly can? That 
that sounds like Tom to me. That really does. Just one more time, will you say my name? And can you say goodbye to me? So I'm going to say goodbye and uh, please return to wherever it is that you've came from and thanks very much for trying to talk to me and saying my name and uh, maybe we will talk again. Thank you. There you go, that's my first session with the Necrophonic app. It's not a cheap app by any stretch, it's uh, like 10 euro or something. But um, I thought it'd be worth trying because I've seen a few people doing it uh, online and getting some good responses. And I thought it'd be another kind of uh, way that I could try and contact my spirit guide. I think with the spirit guide thing, what I might be doing is I might be limiting too much in what I'm looking for and should just probably move from the spirit guide thing to just general contact with um, anything that's kind of round or uh, you know any kind of spirits because they mightn't see themselves as that way of, uh, under that label or there might be something else that you know like a, an ancestor or, or a dead relative trying to contact me or whatever these things are I don't know there might be nothing probably more than likely is nothing and I'm just creeping myself out for the sake of entertaining people on YouTube which I'm still fine with so uh yeah, I'll put the link to the app in the show description and uh, if anything came up, I would put the subtitles up as I said and uh, we go from there. So yeah, that was cool if nothing else. I enjoyed it. A bit creeped out, but uh, I enjoyed it. So the remote viewing game, the new remote viewing game that we're going to try is a bit more remote viewy, I guess, than ESP, which was the last one, a bit more guest to shape that's in the envelope. Um, and what I've done is I've asked Spud from the comedy cast to go somewhere and uh, we're going to try and remote view where he went. Now, I don't know where he went other than it's somewhere in Poland because that's where he lives. And uh, I know the time and it was 9.33 a.m. on the 16th of March. So it's in the past already. It's already happened. So no matter what stage you're watching this, you'll be able to do this remote viewing because you can remote view, you know, the time and space. So none of it exists in remote viewing territory. So we're um, going into the past. So if you're doing this in six months, still try to play along if you want. Of course, the answer will be in the next episode. So you can also cheat if you want. I don't know where he went. He has the video already done, recorded, but he hasn't uploaded it. So um, you can remote view a number of things. He, there's a video that I'm going to show you now of him introducing himself. So you can use him as your target, his likeness and the bit that he said about it. And it's just before he leaves to get in the car to go to the place wherever he ended up. So you can remote view from there or you can remote view the time. You can remote view the general location and see what you come up with. You can remote view the recording, the video recording itself, or any number of kind of ways you want to attack this. So I will uh, let Spud introduce himself. Hello, adventurers in Woo Woo. How's it going? Uh, my name's Spud Murphy. It's uh, lovely to uh, be here. <laughs> um, so I'm going to be doing this remote viewing little game with uh, Tommy Kelly. Thanks for letting me do it, Tommy. How's it going? <laughs> and uh, a little tiny bit about myself. Uh, I am an Irishman. You'll have picked that up from my accent probably. And I live in a town called Cheshin, which is on the border of Poland and Czech Republic. If you want to look it up, I'll spell it for you. It's C-I-E-S-Z-Y-N. And I'm a podcaster and a filmmaker as well. A documentary filmmaker. Uh, that's pretty much... All the clues I'm going to give you, 
And uh, oh yeah, yeah, I want I need to I want to show you what the, the date and the time. So hold on a second. Okay, Google. Um, what a uh, day and time is it? What date and time is it? Oh God, do it again. Uh, what's the time and the date? Okay, so I hope you got that. So it's 8.53 a.m. It's Saturday, March 16th, the day before Paddy's Day. Bye. So that's kind of it. That's all you need to know. As soon as he pressed stop and recorded that video, he got in his car and drove somewhere. So you know, you could probably work out some kind of thing uh, from the, the map where he lives and the locality, being that the actual thing that you're uh, remote viewing is uh, 9.33, so it's uh, like less than an hour from when you recorded this video, so it's obviously less than an hour away from side. But don't think too much about that. Don't do that. Um, unless you want to, unless that's the type of game you like to play and all that. But uh, so yeah, to try get into a different kind of mode or a different kind of uh, way of looking at things and try and see what you come up with. I'm going to do it myself and uh, that will give you a service, an example of how to remote view, but not as a perfect example. This is just my opinion, just how I do it and uh, we'll see what I come up with but I will leave some links in the show description if you want to know a bit more how to do remote viewing or get a bit more kind of ideas behind it before you attempt it yourself so uh, email me private message me comment all of those things with what impressions or what kind of images or where you think Spud ended up at 9 33 a.m March Saturday March 16th 2019 uh, let me know Okay, and hello. We're going to do some divination, and uh, I'm going to start with the patrons. And I'm going to do them with the forty servants, and then tomorrow, because it's late night here, and I'm not going to get everything done. I will uh, do what's left of patrons if there's more coming in, their questions, and then everyone else's. But I'm going to probably do the rest of them with different methods. I have a couple of ideas I want to try it. Maybe not. Maybe I will do it with the forty servants, but uh, these ones I'll definitely do with the forty servants. So let's get them out. So as you can see, I still have my box. I did not do the box burning because uh, it took me long enough to design this box. I'm not going to burn it. So let's start. Uh, we'll just do a basic shuffle as we normally do. And I'll do, um, I always kind of, when I do a divination, I will take a card first to see if it's, um, you know, if it's right to do the divination at this moment. It's not a card that I would pick to kind of get a reading for myself or to, you know, in any way predict or have any sort of divination. Just a yes or a no. But, you know, if it's a positive card, away we go. If it's a negative card, then uh, I'll, you know, shuffle for a bit longer. Or if I have the time, go away and then come back. So the card I got is the Dancer. So I'm happy with that. That seems like a positive card. That seems like we're in a good place to go. So hold on. I shall uh, get these open. So the first question we have is from Elizabeth Whitaker. Should I look into psychic festivals, fairs to read tarot at, or stick with appointments and parties? So basically your question is, uh, should I branch out? Should I try new things? Would it be good for me to kind of um, expand my horizons, push my boundaries and do these other things? Or should I just be, you know, content where I am? Or is my area, you know, of expertise? Just doing what I'm doing. So, the seer, interesting. So, we have the card of intuition that is talking about uh, going with your gut, going with your feelings rather than being too intellectual about it. Don't go with the thing that looks best on paper. Go with the thing that you feel is the best. That's so, to, to answer your question, it would be, what do you feel when you think of the answer to this? What is the uh, you know the feeling you get around it? Now the thing to watch out with your intuition is because sometimes you can get a kind of a feeling that comes back and go, oh no, that's not for me. And that can be fear rather than your actual genuine intuition. So you have to be aware of that, that if you're 
kind of scared of doing something, you know, you're, you're going to get a bit of kind of apprehension around it. So be very careful that you're not mixing up your intuition with your fears. But other than that, go with your gut is the, the answer. You already know the answer to this question. So, Spiret, next question. Cool name. Will I get an offer to segue to another department at my organization? So, let's see. The father. So we're talking about life's kind of trials and tribulations that we have to go through. And, you know, the kind of things in life that you just can't get round, that these are part of what life is. So, in, put in it, I would kind of say that, that that's kind of maybe that because the way you're saying it, the segue is that it's kind of an easy kind of move. It's just kind of just going to happen. Perhaps not. That I'm not to say that you won't get the job, whatever. That there might be a few obstacles surrounding what you're doing, and uh, that's you know that they're part of the course, they're part of life, they're part of they're just the challenges that we have to go through. They're just the kind of things that have to happen because that's just life. But not to take it personally and to take them with a brave face and uh, all shall be well. It's just one of those things. So yeah, possibly not too easy, but not ruling it out. Just uh, uh, kind of that whole thing of segue kind of has this kind of a breeziness to it. So perhaps not breezy, but uh, yeah. So Daniel Lockwood, will Astaroth deliver on my requests? You hang out with some cool people, Daniel. Um, so let's see. The Dancer, second time it has appeared. So the Dancer is um, about dancing when things, dancing it in the, um, you know, when things have gone bad or whatever. So uh, just seeing that again, it's kind of interesting. It's, it's there's similarities between the father that, you know, sometimes life is shift and that you have to go through these type of things. That is just, that's part and parcel of life. So what I would suggest in this, will the deliver on my request and yes, but possibly not in the way that you fully expected or wanted it and um, that you just have to go with how it comes. It's just like, that's, you know, when it rains, make the best of it, which is why I see that um, for, you know, as a, is this a good reading, you know, time to read. There is a, a huge positivity to the dance. It's making the best of things. So will Astrosh, um give you what you want? Yes, and possibly no. <laughs> But uh, yeah, you're just going to have to make, to make the best out of the situation. I don't know what you've asked or what your situation is, but if it was to try and resolve something negative or trying to do something, there may be some disappointment in it, and that's okay. You know, to be okay with that. Sean P. Rakhaw. Will I make it through March and April on a positive note or on a negative note? Well, you decide that. Um, because even if life turns to absolute who you still get to decide on your reaction to it although it seems sometimes that we don't that there's some sort of physical and emotional response that seems out of our control so what I think more the question you're asking is will I have a good March or an April or will I not uh, because I say your reaction to it can be whatever you want so I'm going to go more with that although no maybe you are asking genuinely you think I'll, I'll, I'll ask the question you actually asked um, will Sean make it through March and April on a positive note or in a negative note? The protester, you will make it um, under protest. So you, there's probably there's a bit of anger there. There's a bit of feeling that you're being treated unfairly. There is a feeling that um, your voice has not been heard and that you need to have a voice or you feel that you need to shout about something or to in some way let people know that you're hurt or if it's unfair or things need to change or there's a bit of a battle there. So positive or negative notes to get through, you will come out feeling slightly angry and want to change and want to shout about it. Louisa, should I start charging for readings? Sure, why not? That's what I say, if you want to. Let's see what the card says. The protector. So what I would say in that is that if you're going to charge people for anything, it doesn't matter if it's readings or not, but particularly what readings is that you take on a huge more responsibility than if you do 
for if just doing it for fun and doing it, you know, kind of as a, a party trick or those things. As soon as you take someone's money, it becomes a fair, it escalates to a much bigger kind of um, arrangement to a, a, a different agreement and you have to up your game to that and you have to take responsibility for that and you have to take responsibility for your word and for what, you know, what you say and your truthfulness and your tact and all of those things. And the protector suggests that you need to protect yourself going into that and know that it's, there is a bit of protection that you would need from that and both for yourself and your clients. So if you are going to charge people, know that it's a game changer. So you're changing your, the game and protect yourself around that. Ladina Bond. Will my husband get the bathroom remodeled done before summer? You have one of those husbands do you, that uh, promises you to earth and then delivers it sometime later than expected. So yes or no question to this. I hope so, Latina. I hope you get your bathroom remodeled done. So the sun, the sun would suggest, being it's the most, in a sense, the most powerful card um, in the deck because it's a representation of power. Um, that's it's like yes is a resounding yes if the efforts put in so Samuel Newman is someone at work trying to sabotage me well without knowing anything else about it I would assume so because that's the nature of work um, that someone is always trying to get your job or trying to get it up or whatever that's quite a pessimistic view in life I suppose but uh, it seems my experience Way out of that is to um, remove yourself from the uh, com competition and not see yourself as being in competition with any anyone else. And then that, that kind of seems to go away. Harder to do in an office environment than you know in the corporate ladder type thing. Easier to do as a self-employed person or a creative. I find, which is one of the reasons why I cannot abide living or working in the kind of corporate ladder type thing, because of that constantly being in competition there's an awful lot of that around uh, when I was a musician as well where it all seems to be competition because it kind of is but I don't have that as an artist because I decided not to have it and all the better for it so anyway is there someone sabotaging you at work the giver the giver is a giver like so it's something you are being offered that you are not necessarily um, being, a, being aware of, or someone has given you a gift, someone is offering you something. Um, so if you feel that you're being sabotaged at work, there is something in it that you possibly aren't getting, or a gift within this that you're not, not necessarily seeing, or that you are seeing it, and the whole thing uh, can be seen as a positive thing. So it's like, the way to look at it is like, say if you lost, lost your job, and you go, oh, this is a terrible thing. You go, well, is it? Well, it's, it the, something better is on the way or something, you know, this now allows you to do the other things. It's a gift rather than some sort of negative. So within the situation of this feeling that you're either being sabotaged or there's a work situation, there's a gift within that. There's something that uh, very positive is going to come out of it. And it's um, like a divine gift of sorts, like a gift from the universe, gift from higher powers, that sort of thing, rather than like, you know, donuts for everyone in the office or that. It's it's part of the bigger picture of your life and uh, will be ultimately good. So, Ariana Bluey, is this a good promotion for me? Well, it's good that you've been offered a promotion and uh, well done on that. But is it the right move for you? Again, please don't take this as gospel. Make your own decision ultimately. Let's see. The gatekeeper. So perfect. This will open new opportunities for you. This will be get you into new areas. So why it might necessarily be the way you want to go or ultimately where you will land. This is the kind of next step that gets you ultimately to where you want to be. It's the opening of this kind of getting you into rooms that you wouldn't previously have getting you into areas you wouldn't previously have access to and getting you maybe information knowledge all of these things that you wouldn't have access to so is it a good move for you yes on the kind of with the idea that it's leading somewhere else not that it's necessarily um the you know the job you want if you say so it might feel like it isn't the job you want but it's not the job you want but it can lead to the job you want or it's going to give you information that will help you 
get to the place that you want to be. So yes, is it good? I would say yeah, yeah, yeah. For but not necessarily. Maybe for the reason that you you were hoping for. It gets you to the place. So that's kind of all we have just from the patrons as I record this. So there'll probably be some more overnight and I will do them tomorrow. But I'm going to maybe try them with different things rather than force them. I want to try this new app that I have that kind of gives random words, which is kind of a bit like Biblom Biblomancy. Other than you're, you're using an app rather than a book. And I have a couple of other things I want to try. So uh, let's skip to that. Welcome back. It's a good 12, 13 hours later and uh, we're set to go again. There was a few more questions from the patrons overnight, so I'm going to get to them first and I'm going to do them with the, the 40 servants. So Heidi Smith, should I take the class and take the test to go on that career path again? So obviously returning, thinking about returning to a career, we need to do a test on it to get back in. I wonder what career that could be. Hmm. Let's uh, see what the cards say. So, the giver. Um, so this came up last night in regards to work as well. And um, so there's something in, that you've been giving something, an opportunity, um, a gift, something. It's and it's kind of always tied in when it being kind of divine, divinely inspired and divinely giving. So it's uh, a sign that you're on the right track or whatever. So does this feel like a gift to you? I mean, you'll know what the gift is. is. Is the gift this job, this new path, whatever, or is it something else? But something has been given to you right now that will ultimately lead to be something really, really good. And um, there's some sort of generosity around you, usually tied in, as I say, with uh, your own kind of divine, if you want, destiny. Or at least if you don't agree with the whole divine destiny thing or any of that, it'll be for your highest good. It'll work out the best in the end. So I would suggest that... Uh, you take the test or take the class and take the test and then make your decision and see what's given to you in the meantime. Okay, so Dream Akai, will going to the Californian location for my summer job be a good opportunity for me? The eye, that would suggest very much so that the eye of providence, the eye of God, very similar to the kind of type of thing that's coming up with the, the giver. And that this is all is as it should be. This is divine plan. This is the um, the work of God. All of these things. So that, yeah, definitely that would going by the cards. Bio beware. And um, the, uh, the cards would definitely say that this is a good idea and it's part of your your growth as a person and it's the right track for you. Darcy Bittencourt is something or someone keeping me from finishing my projects. I have found, without even going to the cards, uh, just a bit of my own opinion here, that uh, uh, it's usually Mr. Procrastination or Mr. Uh, I was going to say laziness, but I don't like the word laziness because it can be avoidance is probably a better thing. But we'll see what the, the, the cards say. I often feel that I'm being hindered and uh, that there's almost like a, a, a demon of some description out to get me. But even I don't take that too seriously. Sometimes it feels it though. Okay, so the fixer. Right, is there someone or something keeping me from finishing my projects and get the fixer? So that's suggesting to me that um, the reason your projects aren't getting finished is you're not willing to do what it takes to get them done. Are you willing? You're not. Are you're not willing to pay the price of what it's need to get uh, where you want to be? So is in, in this is someone or something keeping me from finishing my projects? The answer is yes. It's you, not. Uh, feeling that it's worth it possibly, worth the effort or not putting the effort in or not doing all that needs to be done in order for you to get where you want to be, which is what the fix fixer represents. You can have anything you want if you're willing to pay the price for it. So that's just the last couple of um, patrons and I'm not going to do, I might go back to the 40 servants uh, depending on the question, but I have an app that I want to try out. And it's not in any way a fortune telling app or in any kind of, you know, ghosty occult at all. It's basically, it's called Curious Jane and it's probably used more as kind of writing prompts maybe or um, to give you kind of weird signatures for forums. I think it was one of the things it suggested. And it's basically, if I can get this in focus. 
This is it, and you tap on her, and she'll give you a sentence. So. Millions of our poses dream has sunny mark. So there you go. And so I thought it might be interesting to see if we could do some divination with it. It might be rubbish, and so if it is, we will do something else. But um, let's try it. Uh, so, Bruce Liu. Is that how you pronounce it? L-I-U? Will my summoning be successful? Will Rate be clapping? Will Rate be clapping? So, I, I said, yeah, so yes. What we're going to take from that, will Rate be clapping? So there's the clapping, so that's the sound of applause. That's something that happens when it's success. So I would say that, going by this, Curious Jane would say that that's a positive. Lisa Penso. Um, I was wondering about a change of career, but I am floating directionless. I appreciate some navigation, whether it's a good idea to make a change and, what, and ideas what to do. Vig, I know, I tried. Okay, so let's try, see what... Oh, I hate technology. Why is she respectfully cheating today? <laughs> so... Why are you respectfully cheating today? So what are you cheating? What are you avoiding here? There's something, I'm wondering about a change career, but I'm floating direction. So it's, this would suggest that what you really need to do is sit down and have a good think and stop trying to avoid things, stop trying to cheat your life in a sense, and really have a think about what you want to do and start um, working towards those things rather than being, as you say, a bit floatless and a bit all over the place with it. Try and nail down what you like. Start with the things that you would love to do Start with the things you really don't want to do. Kind of narrow down the field of what you, you'd like to get into and stuff like that. So, uh, stop cheating yourself. Jacqueline Bradley. Will, will my current job offer me progression or should I cut my losses and just move on? Will he be willingly reflecting her around activity? Will he be willing reflecting her around activity? So, the question that you're asking, will my current job offer me progression? And it's saying, is reflecting her around so your activity at work are you getting are you getting to um like are people noticing what you're doing at work and if you're not getting noticed for all the work you do and you're not getting um the accolades that you deserve you're not getting the awards that you deserve or the pat in the backs or any of these type of things will you be willingly reflecting her around activity then i suggest it probably is best to cut your losses and move on again don't this is an app don't be taking any of this for serious thing but just as a separate another opinion on things so it would suggest curious jane is suggesting that you if you are not getting the accolades the rewards the pat on the backs the compliments the you know being shown gratefulness or thank yous for the job you're already doing or the work you're already doing then there's probably less of a chance of progression and you should um cut your losses Beth Wells, will I be successful in getting a council flat or would it be better to get a cheaper private rented flat or will I be able to stay where I am? So basically three options, which is the best path to take. I'll try with this app, but to be honest, it's uh, very cryptic. Where was he thoroughly moving sometimes? Where was he thoroughly moving sometimes? Interesting, there's about one word that kind of is uh, good with all of it that kind of fits in. Um, would it be better to get a cheaper private f flat? So saying you definitely need to move, um, thoroughly moving sometimes. So that's what the suggestion from this thing is that you need to move. Now that only narrows down a bit to a private rented flat. So your last one's out where I need to stay will I get a council flat private rent. So it's one of the first two. So I assume whichever one would give you the most stability and the one that is going to last the longest. So that you're thoroughly moving in that it's the final kind of move in a sense, I would suggest. So whether that's a council flat or a private rent flat will be up to your own kind of means and all of those things. But you're definitely moving. That's the best I can give you right now. Which hole does Risky Preview wish to mourn on top of our ready melon? May that be a lesson to you. So I'm going to switch that because we're getting a bit too cryptic and a bit too much. The probably ones you have to sit there and think about a bit more. So we're going to go to Bibliomancy and uh, Rosencrantz and Guildenstein are dead, which we've done before, and see what they come up with. So, Beatrix, Beatrice Herman Ehrman. Interesting, cool name. Contemplating when moving back to Ireland in a couple of years, currently looking to buying a house there again. Lots of cards will have to fall into place for us, but it would be me, I, but it would be me again, and f uh, any feeling about this, Tommy? Um, so let's have a, a see. Moving back to Ireland. Should you move back to Ireland? Is there anything kind of around that? I 
and I beseech you instantly to visit my too much change son, some go some of you. So it's saying that what you should do is rather than set on moving to Ireland, that you should at least take a holiday there and have a look because it's suggesting here that it has changed since you've been there in many ways and that you have changed in some way since you've been there and it might not be the fish that you think it is. So rather than worrying too much about moving your entire life to Ireland, work on getting a holiday or at least visit here for a while and see how that works out first and see how you feel about it, how you feel about yourself in that situation and how you feel about the country now as it probably has changed since you were here. Um, I've no idea how to pronounce this. Kaik Garcia, C-A-I-Q-U-E, Garcia. Should I ask my girlfriend to marry me on this fourth an uh, year anniversary? Um, I'm not going to do a divination for that because that's too, a bit too personal and, you know, come up with whatever you thought or whatever you wanted my answer to be, whatever you were hoping for out of the divination, that's what your answer is. Bex Francis, should I keep going with my art or give up and just focus on my day job or do I keep doing both? Let's see what the guys have to say. Do I? Yes, I'm afraid you're quite wrong. You must have mistaken me for someone else. So for a lot of confusion, there's, there's another option here. There's something else that you're not seeing. You're just kind of, you've polarized it into one or two. Should I do this? Do both or do, you know, do none of them or whatever. And there's an, a, a, another option that you need to consider or look at. Personal opinion, I would say, if you're getting joy from doing your art, continue to do your art no matter what. If it's becoming um, a burden or an annoyance or a, something that you feel you are more compelled to do out of guilt than out of actual love, then take a break for, for a while. You don't have to do it all the time. And you don't have to turn your art into a career or into your job. Um, it's not a prerequisite to art. You can do art for art's sake. And if you don't hate your, your job, stay with it. So it's up to you. Um, the divination is saying that you're, there's something that you're not quite thinking about. There's a third option or fourth option because you can be three. There's another option <laughs> that you can have a look at. Kim Sampim, are my fi finances going to improve? Just a minute. Well, all right, I wouldn't mind seeing just an idea. What will you do for that? Now, there's an interesting, because that's the, the line that follows. So are your Francis finances going to improve? And saying, I wouldn't mind seeing that. So, um, but what are you going to do about it? So it will improve if you do something about it. So it's not that it's just a case of it's going to improve on their own. There's some sort of action that needs to be taken on your behalf for them to improve. And that is the thing that will improve it. Tina Allen Parody. When is my twin flame going to ask me on a date? Well, let's see. This is what tragedy means. <laughs> so hanging around waiting for, on your twin flame to ask you on a date um, was going to lead to tragedy. So what you should do is either ask them on a date and if you don't know who your twin flame is, uh, actively seek them out and maybe not put so much pressure on the people that you are looking for as a prospective partner as being your soulmate or your twin flame or that thing because that might be just too much and you might be you know expectations too high and all of those type of things but as it is and i assume there's a bit of jest in your question that will lead to only to tragedy jeff dolan and i didn't get your questions last time jeff so um my apologies job career pos prospects if possible I'll see what Rosencrantz and Guildenstein say, but if not, I'll go to the 40 servants as well. Turning to Rosencrantz, who is caught unprepared. So, there's a kind of hint there, something about are you, the job prospects rely on how prepared you are to be going into the, the job force and the, the workforce and uh, the job market, excuse me, and all that type of stuff. So be as prepared as you possibly can and be uh, on the ball. I will do 40 servants for you as well just because we missed out on you the last time. So career prospects for Jeff. The mother. So that's, again, that's about kind of incubation in a sense and about art as well and about material things and looking after yourself and shelter and all of those things. So yeah, there's kind of prepare yourself it's like a preparing to survive or to live or whatever and that all has to be in things so i'm not going to relate that to work then 
Um, make sure to give before you you worry too concerned about your career prospects and all that. Make sure that you're as stable as you can be in your life, so that you're going to like get a new career bring upheaval and all that to so try and get as much stability in the areas that you can get stability on before you're um, too focused on going out but that, it's it's hard to know that there's maybe something making more sense for you there than me but two things about being prepared are about particularly about earth type stuff and two magpies just flew past so that's a joy so we'll take that as a good sign for you Jeff. Adrian Goon can you use your tools to see into the future if any of your followers die, specifically because they bought the pseudoscience instead of making the leap into I should probably stop thinking I'm smarter than everyone I meet and maybe listen to people more qualified I am on a wealth of topics. Um, no, I'm not going to do that. Um, good man, Adrian. You're on. Uh, you're on. A, <laughs> you're on a commenting on pages that uh, are only going to annoy you. So uh, probably best to not do that. Reynolds, uh, Reynolds Avalon, info on blockages regarding my attempts to reconcile my friend P and recommendations on what I might try to do so. Right, we'll go to the 47s for this. And we're running out of time, so this will have to be quick. So blockages with your friend P and what to do. The father. And there's no inverted cards in uh, for Servant, so the, it's just the father is all about there's, there's things that happen in life that you've kind of no control of. They're just things that come with life that you just kind of have to experience them and go through them and you become a better person out of them. And it's, they're all learning experiences. There's no avoiding them. They're just the way it is. So perhaps this is just one of those things and just put it down as a learning experience and that maybe there isn't much you can do about it. Um, such is life. So. Sorry about that, Reynolds, that's probably not the answer you were looking for, but again, don't take my word for it, they're only cards and it's only a quick divination that is, see it as just um, another voice, another kind of thing in the back of your mind, another friendly voice that's giving you a bit of advice, take it or leave it. So yeah, we'll do more divinations, we'll try to do something like this once a month, so I uh, hope they were helpful to you. So I'm going to play the game myself now, the remote viewing game, and I'm going to try and get some vision or some sort of input into my brain of where Spud was at 9.33 a.m. Central European time on 16th of March 2019. Now, if you don't know how to remote view, um, there will be a number of links in the show notes that you can check out videos. There's a Russell Targ one in, uh, in particular, which is only about five minutes, which basically explains the whole thing. And uh, but I've put in some other links. The way I'm going to do it is I'm just going to try and get into kind of a meditative state or kind of a trancey type state. I have some incense going. I have uh, low lights in the room, so it should be um, conducive to uh, some kind of you know trancey meditative gnosis type state. And then I'm just going to start right. I have some pen and paper. I probably should have uh, printed something out a bit more official or, or maybe I'll make some official remote viewing uh, pages that you can all have and can print out as well and make a template or something. Uh, but for now it's just a blank page, just a standard A4 print up page. And I'm just going to start, when I get into the zone, I'm going to try and connect to Spud on, those, on that day and then see what comes. The kind of trick it seems to be is that you just go with anything, whether it seems to make any sense or not, just get it down and try not to get it too far in the way of it. So that's what I'm going to uh, attempt. The only kind of thing that I have, the obstacle that I, two obstacles that I have against me, one, I've kind of been thinking about this an awful lot, so that kind of might put me off or might uh, obstruct the process in that um, I've already, I suppose, at some sense, been thinking about it a, a long while since I knew it was going to happen and since I knew we recorded this video and I knew he was going to be doing it at a particular time. Not the exact time, but in a, you know, around about a certain time because he had to get it together for uh, to use in the, the video for this week, so it was a deadline. And two, if I get an exact match or I I'm, turn out to be an amazing remote viewer, no one's going to believe me because they're just going to think I'm in cahoots with Spuds. Spud. But, um, all of those is what it is. So I'm just going to uh, try and get into a meditative state right now 
and then just go with it and see what happens. Okay, so the very first thing that came to mind was a tractor on the side with a big wheel at the back and a wee small wheel at the front. I'll show you all my drawings at the end rather than go through it. Um, then a car door, again, like on its own. Um, some sort of well, like an old fashioned well, like the one from uh, The Ring, with a thing on top of it. A circular thing and a triangle. Um, cobblestone kind of pattern like on the ground. Not necessarily on the ground, but just that pattern. A cave. Wires. It's like a lot of wires. I'm getting like the idea of like a coal mine or that kind of thing, like in an industrial, a place that used to be people worked on it, but in a sense maybe it's closed down. So like something that used to be industrial but is no longer in use. Um, rust, perhaps, barrels that are rusty, got holes in them. I can kind of feel this kind of slipping away from me now. Um, oh, it's like kind of in, um, there's a Depeche Mode video called Useless, which is them in a kind of a, you know, a, in a, what the, the word where you take all like coal out of somewhere and it's um, that thing that's left behind. I can't think of the word at the minute, but like it's the uh, where something has been excavated, an excavation site of some description. Lots of stones, leveled, like not natural. It's not kind of a natural type. As something human has affected the land, like walked the land, destroyed, not destroyed land, but mined it, or that kind of a thing. And bird. Or kind of. So yeah, I think that's what I'm going to get. So we have the tractor, which is the very first thing, and it was from the side, the two circles and so and then this kind of side door of separated. Then you have like these wires coming down almost like you know, like in the like a pulley thing or something or wires connecting or holding things up, but quite high. And this is the well with the, the loop thing on top. Like, I was thinking like not a bucket come down, but something. Just cobblestone kind of pattern. The cave, the rusty type of thing, where you have like sheet metal, but it's all rusty. And then, what was this? Oh, like the excavated site, the bird. And in human, so it's like a coal mine, some sort of closed industrial type place that are like it's an abandoned place that was once a place of industry but is now kind of run down, derelict, empty and has uh, still signs of humanity but from years ago. So that's my guess. Um, and then this, your guess is as good as mine I suppose. So we'll see how that goes. So that's another show done and thank you very much for having a watch and I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to know more about uh, Adventures in Wubu, just go to adventuresinwubu.com and you'll find all of the information that you could possibly want, including social media links, YouTube links, the old podcast and a host of other stuff. All my art, for instance, I'm working on uh, updating the site so that there'll be better kind of 
portfolio pages, which may or may not be up by the time you watch this. So if you could leave a like or a share or tell other people about this show, um, I'd really appreciate it, but feel no pressure. Good people of the internet, have a wonderful week and I'll talk to you all next week. Thank <laughs> you.